There was a time when I bought my very first excavator. It was a mini excavator and I was doing landscape projects that I dreamed about building mountain roads, having big equipment, working on big projects. Now that I'm here with the big equipment and the big projects working on mountain roads, I wish I would have gotten here a lot sooner. This is probably one of the most fun things that we work on. I absolutely love building roads. There's a lot that goes into it and most of that happens boots on the ground. I've seen a lot of people that will get out a topo map and start drawing roads, but it's not until you get out there walking through the trees, seeing where the rock outcrops are at, seeing where the big trees are versus where the little trees are, that you really get a feel for the lay of the land and where it makes most sense to put the roads. There's a lot of other things that we look at like open spots that make sense for home sites, clearings that we can use for piling up slash where we can burn later without doing a lot of damage to the surrounding trees. Slash is probably one of the biggest things that we have to deal with as we're clearing roads and pulling stumps we create a tremendous amount of slash that has to be dealt with when we start a project whether it be 20 acres or 40 acres or 80 acres whatever it might be this type of work is the very very first thing that we do is opening up areas where we can put future roads in by no means is this road building it's more about road clearing opening up the area where the road can go in the future but even before the roads meaning the gravel fabric the road surface whatever it's going to be goes in there's a lot of work that happens between opening it up and clearing things and putting that gravel and rock down and grading it out and rolling it smooth for cars to travel on there's utilities that need to go in and there's drainage that needs to be accounted for and culverts that need to be put in there's a lot that goes into putting in a road that's going to last I've seen people that clear the trees clear the stumps and then start driving on it only to be surprised when the road gets dried out and turns to moon dust or it starts to rain and, and snow in the fall and it turns to mud or it's spring break up and water starts running and they haven't put in good ditches and culverts to let the water run and the road washes out there's a lot to consider whether you're building roads to serve four or five houses or you're building roads to just serve your own your own house take some time do some research and build a road that's going to last a long time it's better to spend the money up front and have a product that's going to last than to be a slave to that road repairing it every single year Once we have the slash out of the way and the stumps and we've moved most of the topsoil stuff, then I like to bring in the road grader. Not that I'm grading a road in the traditional sense of grading a road, but, but the road grader allows me to clean things up, to sweep the rocks off the road, to move dirt around to cut up cut the the hills out and fill in the low spots in a lot of these places we've pulled out a bunch of stumps we've pulled out a lot of roots and it's a pretty rough trail at that point so 
in an effort to make things easier for the project, whether it's the dump truck or the excavator or skid loader or or just vehicles, people moving around the product project. It's always been a good idea to bring in the road grader and just smooth things out so that we can start driving on that road without having to beat ourselves to death. This road is going to continue to change shape and evolve as we move forward with this project, but it seems like with the road grader, if I can get out and run over it a couple of times and move some dirt around and drive over things, that it starts to get smooth, it starts to get flat, and getting around is a lot easier. I can make faster rounds in the dump truck. It's just easier for everybody as the road starts to take shape. And that's something that you need to consider if you're building roads on your property, on your driveway, whatever it might be, that if you pull a stump out of the out of the ground and there's a two or a three foot hole and you just throw some some soft dirt in that hole, it's going to take some time for that to settle, to compact, and you may end up with a low spot there where that stump came out. Um I I have learned that the hard way a couple of times on some really large stumps that we took out that just I could not seem to get that to compact and to fill and I continued to have settling and low spots where that big stump was. So take your time, fill it in, compact it, even if it means going and getting some rockier material somewhere else as opposed to using the soft material that might be close by. It'll save you a lot of pain and suffering down the road. I could spend days out here running around on these roads, grading, smoothing over and over and over again, but the reality is in a week or so there's going to be a rainstorm. The whole place is going to turn into a muddy mess there's going to be ruts in it and after the rain when things dry out again I'll be back out running around trying to smooth things out again so there's a bit of a fine line between return on investment and and overdoing it just for the sake of burning diesel fuel and making things look pretty but I have found that cleaning it up makes for a lot smoother road if I can start at the very very bottom of the road and make it flat and smooth and then start with fabric on top of that and then gravel on top of that if I start flat and smooth at the bottom and work my way up it stays really really flat really smooth and we end up with a really nice road when things are all said and done